This is Movers and Shakers, where we interview the upcoming generation of make it happen multifamily investors to share their story. Welcome to the Movers and Shakers podcast. My name is Gino Barbaro, co founder of Jake and Gino, multifamily investor, educator, father, mentor, and I'm joined by my co host, my brosif, Mr. Joshua Rusin, community director of Jake and Gino. Josh, how are you doing today, bro? Doing well, Gino. Excited. We got a, a platform that's rapidly expanding and students that are making it happen and doing deals and actually very excited today to feature to make it happen students within the community. Uh, Gino, how are you doing today? Josh, it's been a great week. A couple of refis. We closed in a big deal last week, um, helping students close deals. Uh, as I say, I'm playing with house money right now. I'm having a great time. Let's talk about the two students today that closed the deal, Josh. Yeah, so today we have Jamie Gruber and Benoit Malij. So they're an investment team focused on multifamily acquisitions. Currently have 32 units between them and are under contract on 22 more. So with the creation of a fund, their capital raising efforts are increasing as they look to acquire 500 units within five years. They have created the Multifamily and More Investing Club with branches in eight cities around the country. Through this medium, they have acquired deals, raised money, and have grown their community to nearly 1,000 investors. They're focused on building their brand to add maximum value to the investment community and outline their experiences as they grow their company, CF Asset Group. Uh, very excited to have you guys on today. How are you doing, Jamie and Benoit? Doing great. Doing good. Thank you for, for having us. Yeah. So, Jamie, tell us about your background first, and then Benoit, I want to jump over to you. Why multifamily? So my background quickly, I've been a W-2 employee with the same company for the last 19 years right out of college. Uh, kind of ascended to a certain level within that company. And, um, uh, you know, along the way, I think I've realized that, hey, I've got this, this passion for, for, you know, making sure that my future is secured and my present is secured. So I started to, I reread Rich Dad a few years ago, like we all do. Bought a couple of duplexes after that. I had a single family that I, that I sort of was an accidental landlord in owning. So expanded my portfolio very quickly to five units and realized, man, it's a lot of effort to close on two units at a time. So I'd love to go a little bit bigger. Um, so that's why, that's why multifamily and how I found uh, this community. Awesome. Benoit, what about you? Yeah, I, um, so I'm from France originally, um, studied hotel management. I moved to the U.S. in, in 2012. Um, ended up tra- uh, being hired by a consulting firm. I was a traveling consultant for hotels and resorts. So my, my job was to improve their food and beverage operations. So I was on, on the road quite a bit for two years. Uh, and I discovered, you know, podcasts like the Bigger Pockets podcast, got interested in, in uh, real estate investing, ended up getting my sales license in Florida in 2015, I believe. Uh, worked as an agent for a little bit, hated it. Um, I, I just didn't like the, the whole uh, emotions in, in the equation uh, uh, in that part. So uh, I did a couple of different things and then um, ended up being hired by a uh, turnkey company based in Florida, but operating in Detroit. Uh, French turnkey company. Uh, so uh, I worked there for a couple of years, bought a, a few single family properties. And then I realized that it, it, it was going to take me um, way too long to get to where I wanted to be. So I refocused my education on multifamily. And I believe one day I was at work, I saw an ad uh, from you guys on Facebook. Uh, so I applied, I think probably 20 seconds later, I got a call from Josh. Uh, so we, we talked a little bit and then I got my first session with you, Gino. Um, and, and, uh, yeah, I mean, at the time I was, I was pretty unhappy and frustrated with my job. Uh, I had about six months of, of savings. So I decided to go all in, purchase the program, go right into the education. And that's, that's pretty much all I did for a few weeks. Right. Um, I ended up quitting my job one month later, uh, because I, I just made the decision to, not be dependent on, on someone paying my salary. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, once I finished the education portion, I, I uh, wrote my credibility book, posted it on the Facebook group, and then I got a, a comment from Jamie, which I did not know at the time. Uh, so we started talking over the phone um, quite a bit. I ended up visiting over there. We had lunch with brokers, and, uh, and you know we, we realized that uh, these guys were not going to be the ones to bring us our first deal. We had to take... Uh, some some action on our end. So Jamie got the idea of starting a meetup group. Uh, so we did, uh, and this is actually how we found our first deal. So we're probably going to get 
to this in, in a little bit, but to keep the answer short and, and to answer the second part of the question, why multifamily? Uh, I think it's, you know, it, it just allows us to scale much quicker. Uh, it has a ton of tax advantages and, and the bonus is that we get to affect many more lives positively when we when we reposition these assets, you know, with, with 15, 30 families or 200 families at a time. So I've got a couple of comments, Josh. First of all, why did it take you 20 seconds? You should have been doing it in 10 seconds. That's usually Josh is on top of these things. He doesn't waste any time. Uh, the second thing is when I talk to Benoit, um, I'm going to tell a little story because that he, he is the ultimate mih -er. Why? Because when we talked to him, he had his motorcycle stolen. I remember that. And he's like, you know what? I'm still doing it. I'm not making any more excuses. And he's, he's a young guy, didn't make any excuses, locked and loaded. He probably didn't know Jake and Gino from a hole in the wall. But I think once he jumped into the training and, and, the, and the academy, he went full force, focused education. He spent time. He went through every single module. He digested everything, what you're really supposed to do. He burned the ships and he said, this is what it's going to take to become successful. And I think everyone listening to the podcast right now, that's what it takes. It takes that concentrated effort. It takes the ability to believe in yourself, the ability to believe in your mentors, the ability to believe in the community, and then the ability to network in that community. And I know Benoit is not a huge networker, right? Benoit, you're more of the analytical guy. Jamie's smiling over there. He's more of the networker out there. So he got out of his comfort zone, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that Benoit did. I can just talk about that for another second. He really wanted multifamily. He knew why. And when he figured out why, he knew his, you know, that why of getting into it, he realized how I can do it. How you can do it is educate yourself, burn the ships, and then find somebody on there. Jamie, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. And look how he's living. Look at this guy. Tanned up in Florida. He's got a ladder going to I don't know where in this incredible apartment. Just living life, Benny Ben, down there in Fort Lauderdale. So, yeah, he's doing, he's doing all right. He's doing all right. Um, yeah, I, I, to, to honor Ben a little bit more on this, like when, when, when we speak and, and when we talk through um, what we're trying to create as a company, what we're trying to do. I mean, it, it foundationally goes back to, for me anyway, relying upon all of his energy, all of his drive, all of his determination um, in getting himself to where he is and getting our little partnership uh, to where it is right now. So he, uh, he dove in fully and, uh, and he's been an inspiration for me and somebody that I rely upon. Even on a bad day, I'll call him and just, hey man, I'm feeling really rough today. I, I don't know. And he's just like, that's ah, fine. Don't worry about it. And you know, I think that happens vice versa. But, well, dude, uh, when it's 10 degrees up there and he's in 80 degrees, of course you got to call him up and say what's going on. You know, that, 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 that goes without saying. Let's talk about the partnership. But before we do that, I want Benoit really 30 seconds. What did you really take away from the, part, from the platform? I mean, we talk about buy right, manage right, finance right, and now syndicate right. What was like the big learning steps or something that you really pulled out from the academy that helped you close the deal and help you network? So, uh, well, first off, the education portion was really, really complete for me. Uh, it gave me and gave us the confidence to, first of all, talk to brokers and put ourselves in the right mindset. Um, you know, the, then you have the Facebook group that offers a lot of support. There's always members uh, present, you know, able to provide answers to questions we might have or potential, you know, to help us analyze potential deals. Um, and I think it ultimately comes down to two things, right? And which need to be done in the correct order. And you guys teach this very well. The first one is education. Yeah. Um, you know, once the education portion is done, it, it never really is because we're, we're, we're always learning. But what I mean by that is once we have the, uh, a strong foundation, uh, then we need to work on mindset. And like Gino, you say this so well, you know, just crush these limiting beliefs. Um, it, it, I mean, it's really impressive how, less than a year ago we joined the platform right and and jamie and i changed so much uh we went from being basically single family you know investors with, with a couple properties uh to now working on several multi-family apartment deals uh we have what what i think we can call an education platform with probably close to a thousand members at this point with our michigan and multi-family and more groups uh we have a monthly podcast um i now own and operate a turnkey company in, in cleveland ohio we're flipping about 10 to 12 properties a month. Um, we are also developing some duplexes on, on the West Coast of Florida and now in the process of, you know, setting up a fund uh, to help achieve uh, others achieve financial freedom through apartment buildings. So Everything's that, started to hear. With less the, with than the a year, decision. right? That's less than a year. You that's less than a year, yeah. Wow. So you, I know you jumped into the plot education. I remember going having those calls with you and you're know, like, Dude, you're done already. You went through all those videos, so I was like so impressed with the education and, and the and the action. And it really comes down to that you really wanted it. You were really clear 
on what yeah. you wanted. Um, and the limiting beliefs, the way you the way you dispel those limiting beliefs is by partnering with people, right? By being on the platform and, and being with like-minded people. The environment is so important and the identity. I think Benoit, once you change your identity from a single family turnkey guy to a multifamily investor, I am a multifamily investor. I think that's what everyone out there has to start doing, start identifying, not like the chef that I was. Once I identified as that multifamily investor, that took it to the next step. And the only way you do that is by surrounding yourself with like-minded people, right? Yeah, well, you know, I, I want to add to that. Early on, something he said that stood out that correlates with his success is one, he, he made a decision, committed, and then after that, he got educated and took massive action. I feel that recipe early on is a great way to achieve success. What I find with most people and what I believe holds them back is they're more curious than serious. And when you're not fully committed, you're going to retreat at the first sign of danger. You see with these guys, they took massive action, overcame any per resistance because they had that persistence. Uh, so Jamie, what I really want to do is, how did you get the idea to do the multifamily meetup? And then both of you talk about the deal because the way you found the deal to me is ingenious. It's, it's really talking to brokers, but it's, everyone says there's no deals, there's no deals, there's no deals. If you continue to say that, you're going to be a self-fulfilling prophecy and there are no deals. So jump into that for me real quick. Yeah, yeah. So, so the... The way we, the way, why we started the multifamily group um, was we were talking to brokers and, you know, going back to the education piece, we had our credibility book and we, we publicized that to everyone we spoke to, a broker, a property manager. And you know what? We got great, great uh, feedback on that. People would tell us, man, people are coming to us as tire kickers, but this is very clear. You know, there's, there's, there was instant credibility with having that credibility book. Um, which was great. So we met with brokers, we did all this stuff, but then I would get, or, or Ben and I would get, you know, emailed listings that are kind of like, yeah, I, I saw this, this is on your website. I know about this one. <laughs> like, there was nothing that, that we were getting that was, that was new or unique or anything like that, despite the criteria we put out there. You know, we just weren't a priority on anyone's buyers list at this point or, or, or anything. So, you know, again, you think about the community, yeah, there's the education, there's the ability for us to partner, but then there's kind of that make it happen mindset, right? So that was kind of what, what made the, the meetup become what it was. It was, we're not getting deals through brokers. Uh, we got to find other sources. We got to, we got to put ourselves out there a little bit and, and figure out how we can, how we can attract not only deals, but capital people and, and, and all of that stuff kind of become experts in our, in our market um, and faces in our market. So that was the, the genesis of the meetup was, hey, let's see if we can kind of put ourselves out there. And I remember the first one we did, it was in an insurance office. We had no multifamily deals uh, at that point. And we're standing up there displaying the credibility book and talking about it. Uh, like, you know, oh, this is what you do, right? We're, we're the multifamily experts here. And people were soaking it up, man. They were eating it all up and, and it was great. But it um, yeah, it worked. And, and you know what? After, uh, to, um, as far as how we got this first deal, after a couple of months of a couple attending, this one couple was attending our meetup from the very beginning. And after, you know, a couple of months of getting to know them a little bit, they kind of approached us and said, hey, we've got this, we've got this property. It's eight units, they told us. Um, uh, but the, the owner has 16. Um, you know, we're looking, to, we're looking to take this down. We need a little bit. We need to partner up. Sounds like you guys do as well. Any interest. So, you know, we got to know them, uh, learned more about them. And, and, you know, they're, they're fantastic people. And that's to this day, I mean, there was, you know, we, we made the right choice partnering up with the, with, uh, with Eric and Kelly. And, uh, and that was the, that was how we got the first deal. They had done a lot of work in advance. They brought us in. We, you know, we helped them close it and, uh, and now we're operating it as, as equal partners. So uh, Benoit, you said that they, they were eating it up from the very first one. You guys pulled the ultimate Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill wasn't rich, but he interviewed rich people and he positioned himself as an expert. So, I mean, when you start the meetup, most people will probably quit after the first meetup or they'll say to themselves, I have no credibility. How can I be speaking about multifamily? You don't need credibility. You just get people together and you just start talking and bouncing ideas. What, what did you think about going into that first meetup? Were you nervous? Did you have any kind of uh, framework? to go I and mean, give me the idea what happened in that first one. Extremely nervous and, uh, and Jamie as, as, as a good partner announced to the group that I would be presenting <laughs> at the next meetup and talk about how to analyze multifamily properties. So I was very excited, extremely nervous, but you know, it, it, it ended up working out. It, it got me out of my comfort zone uh, and then gave me the idea to just open one down here. Uh, and this is kind of, you know, yeah. Can I jump in on that? Because it was hilarious. I did. I was like, hey, you know what? Next month, what do you guys want? You want to go over a, a multifamily deal? Ben, Ben, when you come back next month, you analyze a multifamily deal. And what was great was he was he was good, 
And then like two or three syndicators showed up, right? Like two, three guys who know what the heck they're doing. And Ben's up there, just this bead of sweat. I mean, he's <laughs> saying things in French under his breath about me that I still don't understand to this day. It was the funniest thing in the world, the poor guy. But hey, we, we muscled through. And you know what? Those guys that came, you know, one in, partic one in particular were really supportive. And, yep. uh, and just, you know, they, we, we, you know, asked them for their, their thoughts at different points. And it became more of like a, you know, like a group discussion than yep. it was just Ben up there kind of parroting his brilliance. So this is something that Josh would do to me. It's either sell or be sold. It's like, you know, I, I just did it to my wife recently. We're doing a spouse's uh, round table at the live event in October. So she says, what do you think about it? And I didn't even say anything there. I just put it on, on the thing. You put it onto the ethos, something happens. I've got 20, she goes, why'd you do that? I was just asking you about it. I said, you don't ask me about something like that. I'm going to put it out. So you, you push your partner to do that. And that's what partnerships is so awesome because did I want to write a second book? We're in the process of writing a second book. Did I want to do a second podcast? We're in the process of doing a second podcast. That's what's really important when you have partners that are working really hard, that'll support each other and that'll push each other. Um, and because you might not, Benoit, you might not have gotten up in front of those people on the second one. You might not have even oh, yeah. created that meetup, right? So mm -hmm. that's something that's really, really powerful that people have to realize that multifamily is a team sport. By the team members, Partners, coaches, mentors, you need all that support system to get yourself going. So I think that's awesome. Um, let me ask you both, you, uh, what do you think is your best advice for anyone that wants to get into multifamily? Jamie, you first. Sure, sure. Uh, first is you got to get educated. You know, a platform like yours, uh, Gino, is, is a great spot to start. Um, like Ben said, you have to continually be educated, not only on, you know, the ins and outs of multifamily investing, but just your local market. I, I, you know, I just sit on the couch reading articles. Sometimes I posted one last night that I thought was interesting. So continually educating yourself, I think is, is number one. The second one, and it's, you know, I, I, I hate saying it like this because it's such a, it's such a cliched term to say network. Um, but you have to take that and really, really blow that up. Like everyone knows to network. Oh yeah, you get in the room with people and talk to people. It's a good thing. But I, I think you have to network like, like your life depends on it. So whether that's creating a meetup group or attending meetup groups and helping out a local organizer that's doing it already, um, you know, contacting people. Like I email everybody that RSVPs uh, ahead of the t ahead of the meeting. Right, every time, just. Individual. I don't. I don't do a, a systematized thing at this point. I individually contact every one of them. I reach out to people constantly within my group. I network all the time within my group. Every moment I can get, um, because the return on that has been unbelievable. If you if you'll indulge me on a couple of quick things. Sure. So somebody actually reached out. Uh, he's part of the group, but he invests in Michigan, and he's part of he's part of the Wheelbarrow Profits group, and he's part of my group as well. He's like, hey, man, I got this 24-unit deal off market I can't do anything with any interest in it. I'm like, absolutely. So I went up, looked at it, submitted our LOI. We didn't get it, but it was completely exclusively ours, like a, a REMAX agent had it, right? It wasn't even like a, like a commercially listed property. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people you know, come to me with, with uh, hey, I've got X number of dollars to invest. You know, can you help me with that? Or, or I've got a 60-unit coming to market, um, you know, any interest. So by networking and putting yourself out there and being kind of present all the time and in people's minds as far as being that multifamily resource or multifamily investor locally or one of them at least, um, stuff just starts to attract to you. And that's been, the, to me, the power of networking and the power of this group that we created. So I say education and then network like a boss. Thank you. I like that. Benoit. No, I, I completely agree. I, I would have, I, I, I think I have the the same exact question. Just I would just add on on the networking since I'm kind of more the introvert person in this group. Um, what I realized is that it's not complicated to network, but you you want to do it in a really genuine way. And there's an easy way to do that is just to offer, you know, offer help, offer service. There's always something you can add to someone's life, even if they're you know in, in a situation more advanced than, than you are today. Uh, each time we have a new member that comes into the group, you know, it's a simple personalized message and, and, you know, seeing how we can add value, what, what we can do. Um, and I, I got some, some of the members who were here who told me, you know, I, I joined this group specifically and I came to the meetup, uh, because I got a personalized message from you and all the groups don't do that. Um, you know, you, what, what can I do for you? That was the first question that I asked them. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, today I got one of the members who, uh, came consistently to the meetups and she contacted me and said, can we go for coffee? 
uh, I want to learn a little more about what you know what you're doing and how I can help you now. Mm-hmm. So it, you know, it, it's kind of a it, the tables turned a little bit. So now she is actually helping me with the with the whole meetup where she's about to open a second um, uh, location here and just putting systems and processes. So it, it, it's just it, it's really a win-win situation. It's not that complicated once you're genuine and you really want to help people. It, it makes things easier. I'm going to teach you guys a new word. The new word is called ambivert. Jamie's an extrovert. Benoit is an ambivert. He's not an introvert. An ambivert is somebody who wants to be an extrovert when they have to be, right? Because a lot of people can be completely introverted and stay at home and do nothing. I'm an ambivert also. I'm not really going out to the crowd and life of the crowd. And I'd rather sit in the corner. But when I really need to get out on stage or do a podcast or meet somebody, we force ourselves. And so the word of the day, everybody, ambivert. Mr. Josh, you like that word? I do like it, although I'm an extrovert to my core. So oh, I gotta... <laughs> you're an extra extrovert. That's what I like about you. Give me, give me a wrap up of the, uh, of the whole show, Josh. Yeah. So, I mean, guys, here's the biggest takeaways, right? So it, taking massive action is going to compensate for some shortfalls and then getting educated, implementing what you learn uh, and really networking. And the best way to network is to seek to serve, add value and be very proactive and when you do that and you're taking those steps, the right things will appear over time. Uh, so that, that's some of my big takeaways. Uh, how about you, Gino? What's the uh, biggest takeaways for the show? Um, the biggest takeaways for the show for me is I like to work with people like Jamie and Benoit. They're genuine. They work really hard. They do what they say and they say what they do. They add massive value to people's lives. And they are part of the go-giver where they're willing to give value before they receive anything else. You know how hard it is, Josh, to create a meetup? You've done it where you're getting up, you're getting a venue, you're getting people together, you're putting yourself out there, and you haven't gotten anything back in return. So think of being the go-giver, right, from Bob Berg and giving a ton of value out there before you receive anything else. And it's hard for people because when you're you know, having to pay the bills, sometimes it's difficult to think of others, but put others you know, in mind that that story that Benoit shared is, is awesome. So, um, Jamie, Benoit, any final thoughts before we sign off? No, I think I, I, would just, I would just emphasize Ben's point about adding value. It's the complete focus of what we do. It's giving and giving. And uh, we, Ben and I have these deep conversations about abundance mindset and how, how important that is. And that's kind of the core of what we, what we do in our networking uh, uh, operation, if you will. So, no, appreciate you having us here, really. Yeah. Jamie, how can the listeners get a hold of you and Ben? So the uh, best way is to go to our, our, uh, our website, which is uh, cfassetgroup.com. So I think cash flow, cfassetgroup.com. Um, on there, there's our contact information. Um, and you'll, you can actually also see uh, or get to our Facebook page. You can go to any of our Facebook groups, which are all called Multifamily and More. We have eight of them. There's Michigan, Cleveland, Minnesota, Baltimore Metro, South Florida, and I'm forgetting a couple. But um, you can check any of those out on Facebook and request, uh, request uh, access. And, uh, and we'd be happy to have you, uh, have you network with us. Perfect. Uh, I want to thank both you and Benoit for being amazing guests on the show and sharing your, your mover and shaker story. Guys, if you want to be the next movers and shakers guest, email me at joshandjakegino.com. Now, if you like the show, please leave us a review. And until next time, let's make it a movers and shakers week. See you later, guys. Bye, everybody. Thanks.